Aha, I have a gun. Oh, well, I have a medical kit. Oh, ha, ha, medical kit wins every time. How about that? Hey, I'm Joe Walton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, we're the authors of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook. Also our new book, Alden's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings. You want to have that? And the designer of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. This spring, we have experienced a rash of tornado events that range from New Jersey all the way to Nebraska. In Alabama, as a matter of fact, one storm killed 23 people. Natural disasters like tornadoes are an ever-present danger. There are close to a thousand in the United States every year, more than in any other country in the entire world. And the grand majority of these traditionally occur in what we call Tornado Alley, an area that includes parts of the Southeast and Midwest. First, what is a tornado? A tornado is a violently rotating column of air that is in contact with both the surface of the earth and the thunderstorm, sometimes called a supercell, that spawned it. From a distance, tornadoes usually appear in the form of a visible dark funnel with all sorts of flying debris in and around it. Also called twisters, tornadoes can have winds of up to 300 miles per hour, can travel for a number of miles. They can maybe be accompanied by hail, and I can tell you from personal experience that close up, they generate a roar that reminds you of a train passing two feet in front of you, a freight train. Tornadoes are categorized by something called the Fujitas scale, from level zero to five based on the amount of damage caused. An F Zero, for example, causes light damage from, let's say, an uprooted tree, broken branches, and things like damaged roof tiles or lost shingles. An F5, however, causes an incredible amount of damage in which buildings can be lifted off their foundations, trees snapped in half, and you might even see heavy debris weighing a ton or more become airborne missiles. Tornadoes, like many other forces of nature, are associated with their share of erroneous beliefs. Here are seven myths that have been widely circulated for decades. You might have heard that you can always see a twister funnel as it approaches. As tornadoes form in thunderstorm cells, however, the rain may be so heavy that you just can't see the funnel. Another one is some suggest opening windows because of the great pressure caused by a tornado. Well, windows are quarter inch panes of glass in most cases, and you're not gonna prevent your roof from being blown off simply by opening them. It's the speed and violence of the winds, not the pressure that causes the damage to homes. Now you'll read advice that hiding under an overpass is protective, that's a myth. Wind funneling underneath an overpass actually increases the velocity of it, so you're safer in an open area. Another myth is that it's been said that tornadoes are purely a country phenomenon and that you're safe in the city. This relates more to the fact that cities are concentrated in relatively less square mileage than rural areas. Tornadoes can strike anywhere. My home was struck by a tornado in 1978 in the middle of Miami. Some people say that a green sky is a sign of a forming tornado. Now paying attention to the sky is not a bad idea if you're worried about tornadoes. But your weather radio is probably a better indicator of when conditions are right for tornado formation. Now, meteorologists from earlier times used to say that the southwestern corner of the house was the safest place to be if there is no basement or tornado shelter. Well, it turns out that winds can arrive in any direction and debris can strike any part of a residence. It's best to stay in a basement or lacking that an inside room without windows. Now, some believe that tornadoes can't cross bodies of water. I can tell you from personal experience, looking from shore, that tornadoes can form right on water. These are called water spouts, and they also can form, by the way, and travel up and down hills. Having a plan of action before a tornado hits is the most likely way your family is going to survive. You should monitor local weather to determine if tornado activity is likely on a particular day. Some municipalities in high-risk areas even have special sirens when tornado activity is on the way. Instituting practice drills with your family, that would help ensure that everyone knows what to do at a moment's notice. If you see a twister funnel, take shelter immediately. If you live in a mobile home, my goodness, you should leave. You should hit the road because they are especially vulnerable to damage from the winds. Now here's advice directly from ready.gov. 
If you're under a tornado warning, find shelter right away. Safe shelter. If you can get to a sturdy building, do so immediately. If you can't, go to a safe room, a basement, or a storm cellar. If you're in a building with no basement, then get to a small interior room on the lowest level. Stay away from windows, doors, and outside walls. And do not get, as I said before, under an overpass or bridge. That's something we, I had mentioned earlier. You're safer in a low, flat location. Watch out for flying debris that can cause injury or death. That is something that is a major issue, trauma, due to tornadoes and Use your arms to protect your head and neck if you have absolutely nothing else. Now here, that's the ready.gov advice. Here's some tips I would add. Once you're in your safe room, stay low, face down, protect yourself with a covering such as a mattress. If you or your kids have a bicycle or other helmets, put them on. For added protection, get under a heavy object such as a sturdy table. Covering your body with a sleeping bag, that might be an additional shield and it could help. You should, however, cover your neck and head even if it's just with your arms, as I mentioned earlier. Those that live in areas where tornadoes occur frequently might consider an underground shelter. Unlike bunkers and other structures that are built for long-term protection, a tornado shelter has to provide safety for just a short period of time. As such, it doesn't have to be very large. Maybe eight to 10 square feet per person would be acceptable. Despite this, be sure to consider ventilation and the comfort or special needs of those people that are gonna be using the shelter. If you're in a car and can drive to a shelter, do so. If there's no shelter nearby, some recommend driving at a 90 degree angle away from the path of the twister. This may be another myth, however. Be aware that although many tornadoes travel in a northeasterly direction, they're fickle. They can change direction at any time. You might be able to outrun an average tornado, but don't count on it. In town, leaving the car to enter a sturdy building, not a bad course of action. Although you may be hesitant to leave your vehicle, remember that they can be easily tossed about by violent winds. City Hall probably won't. No building, you may be safer if there's a culvert or other area lower than the roadway that's not at least under a bridge or an overpass. If you find yourself with flying debris all around, quickly park the car out of the traffic lanes. If there is no other choice, your car is going to protect you from some of the flying debris. Keep your seatbelt on, keep your head down below the level of the windows. Now, if you are in the unenviable position of being caught outside when a tornado hits, let's say on a hike, for example, try to move away from wooded areas. Torn branches and other debris become missiles, so an open field or ditch may actually be safer. Lying down flat in a low spot on the ground may give you some protection. Make sure to cover your head again, if at all possible. That's something I've been saying time and again. It is true for all of these situations. Even when the tornado has passed, there is still danger. There will be debris, there'll be destruction, you may even be trapped in a damaged building. If so, cover your mouth with a cloth or mask to avoid breathing dusk if you possibly can. Now having a whistle to blow, that might save a lot of energy compared to having to shout for help. Three short blasts is considered to be an SOS signal. Of course, if you have a functioning smartphone, you can text for help. If you're outside, stay clear of fallen or broken power or utility lines. Don't enter damaged buildings unless you know it's safe. If you're cleaning up, don't skimp on personal protection gear. You'll need work boots, gloves, as well as protective eyewear. Of course, there may be injuries. Make sure you have a quality medical kit that can deal with trauma. Bleeding wounds, orthopedic issues, these are going to be the most likely things that you'll encounter. If you're without clear water for a time, infectious disease may become a problem. So therefore, have some method to disinfect questionable water as part of your medical supplies. If you're armed with a plan of action, you'll know what to do when you see that funnel cloud or hear that tornado siren. Evaluate your home for weak and strong points, educate your loved ones on the right strategies, and you'll have a head start on weathering the storm. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits, books, and more at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.